Right. Uh, welcome everyone to the European Social Entrepreneurship Education Forum organized uh, by Catalyst 2030. I am Sergio Paramo and I am a lecturer in social entrepreneurship at Maastricht University in the Netherlands. I have the pleasure and the privilege to be the moderator of today's forum. I can see that we are uh, plenty of people here already, and I want to thank you all for being here with us uh, from all corners of Europe and beyond. And the purpose of this forum is first to share with you an array of valuable opportunities and offerings for social enterprise educators. And the second uh, part is to create a space uh, for collaboration where you can engage, discuss, share, and join projects, networks, and activities. The structure of this forum is really simple. It consists of three parts. Uh, in part one, we uh, all our panelists will present uh, their offerings, and then we will go on to breakout rooms, and then we will close this with a synthesis and a goodbye. And so in order for us to move swiftly through this one hour forum and make the most of it, I have one request for you. Please share your name, role and organization, where are you based in the world, and what is your area of interest in the poll? And you can do the first two, in the messages and to answer the poll um, right after that. Uh, well, now let me briefly introduce the fantastic lineup of panelists that we have for you today. All of them expert academics in the social enterprise and social entrepreneurship field with a rich offering of activities, programs, and opportunities. For the sake of time, they will further introduce themselves in more detail during the presentation slots. But I will just briefly mention them. We have with us today Sophie Bach from IMD Business School, Anne Karen Busque from CBS Aurora Universities, Nina Curvini from European Social Innovation Campus, Mona Mirch and Brita Gosso from Future SEE, Christina Theodoraki from Toulouse Business School, Tadex Splanik from Kotrugli Business School, Elisabetta Belkina from the University of Oxford. And myself, I will be representing uh, MS International Research Network on social enterprise. Uh, well, um, so for the sake of time, without further ado, I would like to give the floor to Sophie Bach uh, to further introduce herself and uh, her offering. Uh, welcome, Sophie. The floor is yours. Great. Thank you, Sergio. Starting my uh, timer, delighted to be here and uh, to see everyone online. My name is Sophie Back. I'm uh, originally from Belgium. Actually, my first uh, doctoral um, summer school was by MS in 2007, so that doesn't make me younger. I spent the last uh, 13 years in the United States and just came back to Europe last summer with my family. So I'm professor of social entrepreneurship at IMD in Lausanne, Switzerland. And I have two events I'd like to talk to you about um, today. Uh, the timing of this event is just perfect as the application deadline for both events is on Thursday, February 1st. So, you know, if you have a bit of time in the next two days and you have an interest, there is still time. The first one I'd like to tell you about is the annual social entrepreneurship conference. This is uh, mostly a research conference on the topic of social entrepreneurship, broadly speaking. So we build a program based on participants' uh, accepted submissions and we'll cover topics from social entrepreneurs' motivation, systems change, impact measurement, impact investing, organizational hybridity, you name it. Um, and of course, over the years, this is our 20th annual this year, the program has changed and evolved uh, uh, quite a bit to reflect the evolution of the scholarship on the topic of social entrepreneurship. I'm doing this event um, in partnership and, um, and collaboration with Jill Kikul. She's been my co-director for 12 years. Uh, we've been doing this event since 2012 together when I was a visiting doctoral student at NYU Stern in New York. After which uh, we both have held the events at, at our respective institutions, um, Indiana University and uh, USC Marshall University most uh, recently. This year, 
Uh, big comeback for the conference to Europe, to my new institution at IMD in Lausanne. We expect a, um, a large number of submissions. The submission um, is pretty straightforward and I, I can copy the, um, the links in the chat. Three pages double spaced abstracts of your research are demanded by February 1st and then they're sent to a board of reviewers and by the 15th of February you'll hear whether or not your abstract got um, accepted. The main criteria are quality of the, the research proposed in the abstract and fit with the theme of the conference. And after which you'll be um, invited to register and then later on submit a full paper for consideration for the best paper award, which is a, a traditional uh, best paper award of 5,000 Swiss francs, I guess now, <laughs> with, a, with a new currency. Um, you have the dates here. The conference is uh, mostly happening over two days, a Friday, the 20, um, Friday the 19th of April and Saturday the 20th of April. And you'll meet scholars from, I hope, all over the globe. So including Europe and North America, but hopefully from the African, Asian and South um, American continent and maybe Oceania, we'll see. So the next event I'll talk to you about very briefly is the Social Entrepreneurship Doctoral Seminar. Uh, I see several alums of the seminar here. Um, this is a one week, six day doctoral course that is happening in the summer in conjunction with major conferences. So there's one in June after the Babson Research um, Conference uh, on Entrepreneurship that is happening in Munich. And there is one in Chicago in August before the Academy of Management uh, meeting. There is a website there, sedocseminar.org. If you fill out the contact form, it will send me an email and it will also send you an automated response with an attachment with all of the guidelines. We're looking for classes of 10 students each, doctoral students, but also junior faculty if you have an interest in conducting research in the field and your PhD was really not about the topic. Here is your chance. So with that, my time is up. So I'm gonna give the floor to Nina Karinen from Diakonia University of Applied Sciences. Thank you, Sophie. Uh, and hi, everybody. Uh, and Happy New Year, I guess. Uh, we are still in January, so that's that's something we can we can wish for each other. So, so uh, greetings from uh, Diakonia University of Applied Sciences, Finland, and as I'm seated today in Northern Finland from Oulu. And uh, I'm happy to share you a little bit about the European Social Innovation Campus project we have in hand for the upcoming four years. And next slide, please. Uh, our project is, is joining uh, the Pact for Skills of Proximity and Social Economy, uh, there to contribute to the challenge of the upskilling and reskilling of the 5% of the workforce entrepreneurs of the sector each year to tackle the green and digital transition in the social economy. And, and this we do by boosting social innovation capacities, building a e-learning platform. And, and this um, alliance of ours brings together higher education also uh, uh, vocational education and everything people in for training uh, social economy uh, organizations uh, uh, for this wonderful e-learning platform. Uh, and the next slide, please. Uh, we are there, uh, 15 of us uh, from 10 different countries. As mentioned, uh, there for four years, we started in September last year. Uh, and we are one of the uh, blueprint project uh, in, in Europe on this team. So universities, research institutes, vocational education and, and training providers all across Europe, uh, also labor market actors, local authorities and European networks um, for different kind of study content for individuals. And then they can also for, for example, teachers to, to add on, on their own curricula. Uh, for the future purposes. And that was quickly, briefly from my side. Uh, see you in the breakout rooms. Thank you. We are staying some kind in the Nordics. 
I'm Annika Hüske at Copenhagen Business School, and I will introduce your work then at the European University Alliance Aurora. And thank you. And um, this is combining several universities. Anna, can you are muted? Thank you so much. Sorry for this, first of all. Annika and Juska, I'm uh, from Copenhagen Business School, so we are staying in the Nordic from Finland to, uh, to Denmark. And I will introduce you the European University Alliance. You see a little bit in the, the background. There are nine universities all over Europe dedicated under the ambition to equip our graduates and students with the skills and mindset to address key societal challenges through social entrepreneurship and innovation. And this is also uh, the main angle from, from CBS to work on social entrepreneurship and innovation. And you see here several um, approaches to this. First thing is uh, courses on social entrepreneurship and innovation. Those are international and interdisciplinary. So we have the chance to invite students from our partners and also open this to other students. Mix different disciplines and the students mainly it's different kinds of courses, but they create their own social business models and work on projects. It's experiential learning. And this allows also to tackle sustainability challenges because we have the different perspectives. One course is, for example, a hackathon in, in Italy, where uh, students from sociology, students from architecture, students from business work together and think about there is one house in, in Napoli, what can we do to inhabit the place and what will it mean for the community and bring together these different um, perspectives. Other courses are summer university classes in, in Copenhagen where they work together to develop business models. And this brings me to the next element, the seismic app or seismic community. We are in the transition to rebrand our services. So there will be a new web page. But you see here already the link to the platform. You are, it's a closed platform so that everyone is invited to join. So if you create your account, you will see more than 600 projects on a social entrepreneurship, which is created by students. And it allows also an interaction between the courses over the years and between the educators. And this is about facilitating education. The second part is the seismic survey and also my second slide of the presentation. The idea is was we have the ambition, skills and mindsets to tackle societal challenges with social entrepreneurship and education. And the question is, I have also a background before this postdoc, I've been founding director of the Center on Sustainability Assessment. How can we measure these competences development, how can we really say we achieved something more than having a feeling or striving for it? <clears throat> so I looked into uh, studies, into previous research to identify competences on the one hand, and the next step was to develop a, a survey to measure this. So you see here three boxes. One is on impact competences. You could sum up those four competences with understanding the wickedness of the problem and also committing to solving it. Entrepreneurship competences is developing a solution, but also thinking about scenario planning. How can I act under uncertainty? How can I adapt my, my solution because it's a wicked problem? How can I find the, the money to make it work and to implement it? And finally, engagement competences. How can the, and this is also what you need as social entrepreneur, how can we work together to make this work? How can I share the innovation uh, with others? And besides providing the educators with the chance to think about which of these competences can I address in my course, we have the survey to ask your students before the course and after the course, and then compare, is there a significant uh, competency development? And there I hand over to uh, Sergi, who will present us, Amos. Yes, uh, thank you, Anna Karen. Um, yes, I am. Uh, hello again, everyone. Uh, I am a lecturer in social entrepreneurship at Maastricht University, but I am also a board member of uh, the MS Network. Um, I represent the interests of uh, individual members at the board. Uh, MS is a research network uh, of established uh, research centers uh, and individual members. 
Uh, our goal is to build a theoretical and empirical knowledge, uh, pluralistic in disciplines and methodologies around our uh, SE concept, which could be a social enterprise, social entrepreneurship, social innovation, social economy. So all, all our related uh, and dimensions of SE. This is the next one. And uh, the offering for you is uh, three things. First one is the coming up uh, MS International Training School in Trento in Italy, uh, 30th of June, 4th of July. Application deadline is 15th of February. This is uh, for PhD students and for early career researchers on SE, social enterprise, social entrepreneurship. And for early career researchers, we are uh, offering a few scholarships for financially constrained um, early career researchers. Uh, myself with a couple of colleagues from, from MS, we put together an application for the Society for the Advance Advancement of Management Studies and we gain some of money. So we want to offer you all those that needs uh, are interested in applying for uh, the training school that are in financial difficulties. Uh, please drop me an email. I'm happy to share more information about that. Uh, um, each is around 600 euros more or less. It is to support uh, commuting or any type of expenses. The other offering, it's, um, could you change this slide, please? Thank you. Uh, is a transdisciplinary forum. This is for also PhD uh, scholars, early career researchers, but also senior scholars that are uh, engaged into education in social enterprise and people that perhaps are not researchers, but they teach social enterprise. Um, every two years, MS organizes an international conference last one in Frankfurt, where uh, we, before the, the conference starts, one day before, we organize a transdisciplinary forum. In this forum, within this forum, we have the FETSE forum. It's a forum on education and training on social enterprise. And as I was saying, this forum brings together educators, practitioners, and thought leaders to, um, I don't know, to bring, uh, to, to understand how international networks, platforms, or projects could advance uh, education and social enterprise, social entrepreneurship, and try to bring together theory and action. We noticed that every two years, uh, interesting projects and interesting ideas were coming out from this transdisciplinary forum on education. And naturally, we thought that we should bridge, uh, build a bridge to connect these actions and to move them forward. And because of that, myself with another colleagues, we are at the moment uh, developing an affinity group on education and training on social enterprise, which basically uh, it's a network within MS network uh, to enable MS members to collaborate and develop opportunities in education and training on social enterprise or social entrepreneurship across these dimensions, research and academic collaboration, knowledge sharing and event organization. This affinity group is on the making is in the open. If you need further information, interested in joining MS Network uh, or attending the training school, please uh, drop me an email. I'll be happy to give you more information. And um, with that, I will introduce uh, my colleague, Christina Theodoraki. Dear all, thank you for the kind invitation to join this important panel discussion around leaders in social entrepreneurship. It is a great honor to participate in the Europe Social Entrepreneurship Educators Forum and have the possibility to share some insights with you today. I was asked to speak to you about research and journal, journal publishing, and as editor of several journals in entrepreneurship, I can confirm that all these journals are keen to publish social entrepreneurship research. An important question is how to publish in top journals. And here I provide you with two example, examples of small business economics and journal of small business management with some articles or videos that uh, the editors and chief have provided or written in order to communicate what is the focus of the journal uh, to the authors. So if you target um, uh, to submit your paper in one of these journals or even other journals in entrepreneurship, you can identify these articles in order to avoid any common mistakes. 
Another example is this video that reflects the editor's expectations uh, and uh, common errors that authors should avoid when submitting a paper. Therefore, by um, watching this video, you can learn directly from the editors what you should avoid to do or what are the topics they are more keen to evaluate. Therefore, we are kindly invited uh, to identify in the journals your target who are the possible editors that could be more um, in favor in social entrepreneurship papers. Additionally, it is important to know how to publish social entrepreneurship papers. And we need to start by elaborating a commonly accepted definition that goes beyond just uh, studying social entrepreneurs. Therefore, it is important to engage in the community to expand the importance of social entrepreneurship and highlight its multi-phase nature. Therefore, we can not only as indicate that uh, we provide the research because social entrepreneurship has not been studied before, but therefore highlight why it is important to study social entrepreneurship and expand its contribution to a holistic mindset that enables improvement to the whole uh, entrepreneurial society. To make a long lasting impact, it is extremely important to engage uh, in building a social and sustainable entrepreneurial ecosystem. Today, for instance, we know how to build the entre successful entrepreneurial ecosystems, but we don't know how to uh, sustain them over time. Therefore, it is extremely important to engage all ecosystem members uh, in the value creation process. And here, educators play a very important role in spreading this holistic ecosystem mindset around social entrepreneurship. Thank you again for inviting me, and I wish you enjoy the Europe Social Entrepreneurship Educators Forum. Thank you very Thank you. much. So I think coming up is uh, Mona and Greta. So. Thank you also from my side to be um, part of this forum and to have the possibility to first present Future C, which is an initiative to build a network, but also our Eberswalde University for Sustainable Development with uh, what I think great master program on social entrepreneurship together with my colleague. So what is Future C about? Um, we saw a need to initiate a network among German university lecturers on social entrepreneurship. Of course, there are already some um, networks and initiatives existing, but we want to strengthen the competencies on social entrepreneurship. And we want to connect them with like stakeholders, with researchers, with also social entrepreneurs. And we have planned different activities. Um, they can be either online or offline. And we have a funded project, which we are very happy for three years. So to build and initiate this uh, network, so what we started now is having what we call transfer bridges, where we got together actually with Anna Karen Huska already to develop a common understanding on competence models. So what do we want to teach in our courses? Also, what we want to do is um, regular what we call community calls and to initiate peer-to-peer -peer tandems. Um, also for people getting to know each other because we um, recognize it's quite a new field. It's very interdisciplinary. And people are very eager to get to know each other and to learn from each other and to develop good practices. Um, what we also want to do is, the other slide is um, a yearly summit where we bring together um, researchers, but also social entrepreneurs. It'll going to take ta a place as this fall in Berlin. And um, so you're very welcome to also join. And um, so we put the link of the um, LinkedIn group so oh no, it's a German initiative, but we're very happy to also collaborate internationally and learn from each other. And now I will um, hand over to my colleague, um, Britta, who will introduce this uh, master program. Yes, but I will do it very in brief. So maybe you have been thinking about why do we need a national network for lecturing social entrepreneurship, but please keep in mind well, that we have in Germany about 428 universities and we don't have structured networks that bring lecturers together in that field. And this is the example where we are working on and where we would like to learn more in addition because we think we are never done. So we have an international master study program in sustainable entrepreneurship and social innovation. And what you see here is our curriculum, our modules, but we put it 
together on a longer learning journey. So um, we would like to ensure that our students learn to become a sustainable entrepreneurial thinking and acting personalities. And we would like to do this on the one side in a praxis based study program. So students are learning in one and a half year uh, how to become those personalities or main subjects. But in addition, we would like to um, tell them and to teach them how to do this on the on the surface on cutting edge research on social entrepreneurship education. So this is what we are happily doing here, and we are really looking forward to getting further connections to the international outreach of this group here. Thank you, and maybe Mona has some concluding words. <laughs> oh, thanks. Actually, the time is over, and I will now hand yeah. over to Tate Slavnik. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Greetings from Slovenia. Uh, I am a CEO at Kotruli Business School. Uh, it's a leading uh, business school in the uh, region of Southeastern Europe. But beside that, I'm also leading the World Metaverse Council as a global network of uh, various stakeholders involving in building open inclusive metaverse. Uh, what I will offer you is uh, MBAverse. It's a, a global platform that we, that we built uh, in collaboration with uh, Petruli Business School and World Metaverse Council, actually developing uh, a completely new way to uh, offer online EBA uh, programs uh, using AI and uh, XR technologies. Uh, so uh, we are calling on a global scale uh, and uh, giving uh, opportunity to 1,000 uh, scholarships uh, that we uh, are trying to offer, of course, to the social entrepreneurs uh, for, from various uh, regions uh, globally, uh, particularly focusing on the developing countries. Uh, what we will, of course, uh, support all of the students, not just the one who will get the scholarship. It will be that uh, we will uh, support them on their uh, MBA studies wh when they will be doing final exam. Their final exam will be focusing on sol solving some concrete social uh, impactful issue in their local community. So on the end, we will not just giving the opportunities to the students to get the MBA, but we will actually get uh, many impactful projects. Uh, how we are combining uh, uh, this program with uh, Think XR project yeah. is the second slide that I would like to share with you. It's an ongoing project uh, with the Slovenian and uh, Norwegian uh, universities and stakeholders uh, that we are developing a completely new curriculum, how we can use the uh, augmented and virtual reality while we are speaking how to introduce this in secondary and uh, uh, secondary schools and in the uh, faculties. Uh, so with this, we are developing uh, and also offering the uh, potentials of uh, using ESR technologies either in the educational programs of you as our potential partners. And of course, we are also uh, preparing the educational program globally uh, to educate uh, uh, mentors, professors, how they can utilize XR technologies while, while they are teaching and uh, uh, delivering the knowledge. Uh, thank you. This is all from my side. And I, I would like to pass the, uh, the floor to El Elisabetta from the University of Oxford. Thank you so much. Um, thank you. Um, so my name is Elisaveta Belkina, and I'm a social impact education coordinator at the School Center for Social Entrepreneurship here at uh, the Said Business School, University of Oxford. And it is my great pleasure to talk about one of the School Center's flagship programs, uh, Map the System. So there are many innovation competitions that uh, seek easy solutions to complex problems. And unfortunately, these solutions often fail to work or have unintended consequences when implemented in a real world. So to address this issue, the School Center founded Map the System in 2016 um, as an antidote to traditional business plan competitions. And this competition encourages participants to use a systems thinking approach to explore complex social or environmental challenges 
developing insights that inform a pitch uh, from uh, for transformational change. Although um, MAP the system ends in an annual global final here in Oxford, where students pitch their change plan, at its core, it is a systems thinking program that equips participants to approach wicked problems in a new and innovative ways. And partnerships have played a critical role um, in the success of MAP the system. So in 2023, a total of 63 partner institutions were involved in the competition. And since its inception in 2016, 138 universities have participated. So this year, um, we have paused the program in order to redesign it for the future. And we are still working on the design and delivery model, but it will be a largely um, asynchronous course designed to be taken um, over around 12 weeks, during which time students groups will work on a project to apply their learnings. And Map the System tutors will support them along the way, as well as um, our partner um, partner educator institutions. Um, thank you so much, and I will hand it over to um, Debbie Brock. Hi all, thank you so much. We're just going to finish this off with uh, the ways that we can share these resources on the Social Change Innovators online portal. It was started in 2018, actually back in 2003, but we put it online, resources for teaching social entrepreneurship systems change, theory of change, you name it, we've got topics in there. In the categories, you'll see learn. That's all the teaching topics that are available to you. It talks about that on the next slide. And you can upload all your teaching resources that you have created. My whole theory is, is that no one from your class will ever be in my class. And uh, so I can share all my resources and now you can share them with your students. Uh, it's a great way to cross-pollinate opportunities within our teaching and research. So you'll see those modules. Those, there's also curriculum development, new courses. And the next slide I just show you is students love this, is we have opportunities for jobs. So we also have on the next um, slide, which maybe isn't there, um, but it has the opportunities for jobs in there. But we're going to go right into the breakout room discussion. So I'll hand it back to Sergio. Yes, thank you, Debbie. Uh, as, as Debbie said, we have organized two breakout rooms. So for, with the poll that you answered in the beginning, you will be assigned to those. So please participate and engage as much as you can. And then further, please assign someone from that group to report back, to share the insights with the rest of the people. So please now join um, the breakout rooms that will be appearing in your screen and focus on answering uh, either or the questions that you will uh, have as, um, as you tap for the break, breakout room. We have a bit of a limited time now. So I will ask you for two brave volunteers to report back of what was discussed or talked uh, in the breakout rooms. Whoever wants to, to jump in. I could start <laughs> with, nice. the first, with the first group, which was very nice meeting people and talking about how not to duplicate um, existing um, initiatives. And I think the challenge they're getting to know what's out there so they think it's great to have format like this but also seeing that catalyst 2030 could be a great platform to map which initiatives are there showing who is like open to collaborate like this linkedin open to work and first to get a yeah knowledge who's doing what and very important not only eurocentristic but also including like africa or other regions so that was really nice and also um, motivating everyone to become a member of Catalyst 2030. I just went through the procedure and it's very easy. So we yes. look forward to this. Thank you, Mona. Those were really, really um, valuable insights from there. I agree fully with you about making this a global scale network, not, in, not only Europe. And I'm happy to see people from uh, beyond Europe joining here. Um, somebody else would like to compliment these insights from the discussion that you had in your groups? I am very sure there were very interesting insights coming up. So we need another brave uh, participant to join. 
Sergio, I can jump in. I I posted um Amazing, some Gary. things Thank in you. the yeah. in the chat. Um, we had a really good group. Uh, it, congratulations to everybody organizing the session. I think there was we all just started off by saying just how wonderful it is to connect and to be able to connect around teaching and and researching. I think that feeling of isolation came through strongly, and so the recommendations were a central portal where we can all quickly upload or update opportunities, um, readings, just interesting things that are happening. And around that, um, start formalizing uh, networks for research and, and teaching collaborations. Um, also some recommendations for teaching cases came through from both Emerald and Ivy. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thank you very much. I think we are getting closer to the next uh, part of our session, which is about synthesizing synthesizing insights from these discussions. Um, if somebody else would like to join a couple of words to have a three groups, perhaps to complement on Karen's, otherwise I can synthesize these insights with other insights. Oh. Right, well, um, from what was mentioned, I think um, we can start uh, mentioning how important it is to take into consideration uh, teaching and education that is, is, is done outside uh, Europe and how can we create these spaces, physical or digital, to bring that knowledge from outside uh, and to share that um, in the same platform. Well, we have uh, here a list of synthesis and reflection um, by uh, the team that is uh, hearing uh, what is going on here. So we have here uh, Europe and cross-pollination of programs. Uh, I, would, I would say uh, beyond Europe, um, innovative programs highlighted today from conferences, summer schools to teaching resources. I would encourage you all to take advantage of all the links that were um, place in the presentation to join these uh, coming up events. Um, they are really valuable for early career researchers and PhDs, uh, also those, those that are interested in uh, building a, a career on, on social enterprise education. Um, uh, something else uh, discussed was the need to strengthen the education, identify core competences. I think for that we need to and join forces, researchers and educators. Some people are both, some people are one or the other, to then uh, do more research on this to uh, improve our education, uh, to prepare students to understand system change and map the system. I think uh, Debbie uh, uh, and Catalyst 2030 are already um, providing a lot of tools regarding systems change. So perhaps you can have a look at all the resources of, that Catalyst. 2030 is offering, and of course, adding your own resources. Map the system, we have uh, this offering from Oxford University. Perhaps you can engage in conversations with them for that. And developing a global scale network across the world to share um, resources. Uh, Karen uh, is leading or co-leading this ANSYS network from, uh, from Africa. So, you can also have a look at what she has been doing. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's some interesting cases also coming out from Africa that we could use also to be social entrepreneurship. Uh, perhaps creating a LinkedIn group where all the networks can share resources across. I think that would be a very, very good idea. Um, so um, let me see how are we doing in terms of time. We are uh, getting closer to the end. And um, with that, I think, um, so and Debbie, I think you wanted to um, introduce here the poll. Yes. That so um, this poll, we're trying to track all the social entrepreneurship programs around the world. And we'll share all that information with all of you if you want to research any of them. If you're members of Catalyst, all the information is accessible. If you want to research social entrepreneurs, uh, we You have access to the social entrepreneurs within Catalyst. You're also welcome to invite social entrepreneurs to your classroom. So we've learned that the virtual speakers, because we're not, uh, we don't always have a social entrepreneur in your town and you tend to pick people that you already know. This gives you the opportunity to bring in people from other parts of the world that have ex expertise in other areas of social enterprise that might be interesting for your students. So please do share 
Uh, in the link, we'll share the contact information for you to reach out to Cindy from our team to get a social entrepreneur in your classroom. The other thing with Catalyst that we're doing is these academic hubs. So as you're filling out this survey, which has been launched, and so we'd love for you to fill those out. So it's still sitting on your screen. One person's filling it out. Uh, there we go. We're getting more. Um, but we did want to share this idea of this academic hub is that we have regional hubs around the world. And what we're doing with um, this group is we want to bring together these collaborations and give these opportunities for folks so that we can share more resources, teaching resources, sharing on the social change innovators, any of your teaching resources. One of the things we talked about was LinkedIn, as we'll create a LinkedIn portal for all the organizations and all of us as individuals. So we can all post on the SCI, or sorry, on LinkedIn, whenever you have an article that's been published or a case that's been published, or you wanna invite people to an event, it's a great way for us to get more people to share and those resources. Also, we know that's how we meet our collaboration partners that we research with. So we'll have events quarterly to bring multiple actors involved. And this time we'll let the speakers have a little bit more time. And then lastly, um, we want to get more action. So when there are those grant opportunities with uh, um, URMS or Horizons or one of the other grants is that people within this group are collaborating together to go after the funding to work more with social innovators in their classes or to work across the world with other educators in this space. The next slide we just wanted to share with you is this, that these are the, the networks that are open. LATAM we have in, in the works, Americas, um, MS with the Europe, India Academic Hub. Well, actually, this is ASEAN now. So that one's already available. And then lastly, I'll send it back to Sergio to uh, have your thoughts on uh, your gratitude for today. Thanks, yes, Sergio. Uh, no, thank you, Debbie, for this fantastic opportunity. For I want to thank Catalyst for going beyond, for this fantastic opportunity to put all of us together today. And I think we should all feel um, quite great, great, uh, grateful to have had the opportunity to join and share ideas and to know more about social enterprise education today. So I want to ask you to briefly write a line uh, in the messages about what made you grateful today. Uh, it could be in relation to uh, what you shared, what you heard today, or something that happened during your day today that you should be or we should be grateful about. And I want to also invite anyone that is uh, here in the audience or the panelists to share any thoughts about what made you grateful today. If you want to speak up and use this uh, couple of minutes at the end of the session. So let's take one minute for that, one or two minutes. So I will, I will start when everyone is writing down these thoughts. I am immense, immensely grateful that I had the opportunity to showcase uh, what MS Network is doing, to open these opportunities for researchers and educators out there, and to also be in contact with Debbie and her team and all the people that is working today in this presentation that allow us to create a larger community of social enterprise and social entrepreneurship educators. Somebody else would like to share some thoughts? Well, I can read some. Uh, thank you for connecting, service learning opportunities, feeling part of a group. Yeah. Well, uh, I think everyone is actively participating there. Uh, with this high energy that everyone is bringing into the chat, and I'm sure everyone is feeling at the end of this fabulous um, forum. I would like to uh, ask you a small favor. Please uh, follow Catalyst 2030 in Facebook, in X, before Twitter, in Instagram. Join the LinkedIn group Catalyst 2030 and also watch the videos in YouTube. There's plenty of material. You can please add material, but also uh, use material that is in the platform that Debbie has been um, managing with her team all this uh, massive effort uh, for that. Debbie, I don't know if you'd like to, to close with some words. 
I think that it's a it's a warm welcome and thank you to everyone that joined this session. If we could all unmute and thank our speakers on your way out. We'd love to thank each and every one of our speakers uh, for joining us so you get exposure to everything that we presented today. We will also follow up with an email with all the resources, the PowerPoint slides, et cetera. So thank you all thank for you. joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Debbie. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. See you soon. Take care.